Hi guys, this is a quick introduction to using smart objects for um, Photoshop and particularly of use in when you're doing the um, Matchbox tutorial in 206. So um, what I've got here is a, a basic um, shape. It's no longer a 3D shape, it's, it's been rasterized very much like the one that you're dealing with. If you look down here I've also got the um, the actual 3D version which can be played with um, but we're not going to go into that much detail today we're just going to stick with a simple option so if you're wanting to stick something into one of these areas and change the shape it's um, nice and simple um, there's a number of ways of doing it but the easiest one is to to select the layer and give ourselves a new layer and we're going to go layer mask and reveal the selection and then we can simply drag and drop or paint in whatever we're going to be painting into this part of the layer and it will fill up and stop it bleeding out the edges. Now that's all very well and good but when you start trying to do text and things on an image like this it starts getting really really difficult and there's a much easier way of doing it so let's delete that one and this time we're going to select this part of the the layer and we're just going to go layer mask and reveal selection we're just going to save that for a, a couple of minutes um, we're not going to use it anymore create a new layer and this time we're going to use the fill tool um, and I need to generate a piece of paper um, that is going to be the size and shape that this um, the side is. Now this is a cube so actually we've got a nice easy job we've only got a cube to, to fill so I can fill up the whole of the paper and I've got a, a shape that when I resize it should fit. If you've got something that's more like a um, A4 piece of paper you can just draw the um, the shape in and make sure that you've got it the, the right dimensions to start with and it makes life a little bit easier. So next thing we do is right click but not on the layer next to it and we can convert to a smart object it comes up with this little symbol here. Okay, so we're going to rearrange the smart object to control T and this brings up our resizing option and we're going to use the perspective warp tool and just decrease the size of this. Now this takes a little bit of fiddling to, to get in the right place but the easiest way to do it is we want each of these center pieces roughly in the... whoops roughly in the middle of the edge. Um, we don't have to make it absolutely perfect because we're going to um, play with something else and, and we're going to use that layer mask to, to actually get things lined up. But as long as we, we start off with something and it, it, it is a little bit fiddly just adjusting this to, to get to the right size and dimension but it is worth it. So if you grab the corners it makes things bigger or smaller. You grab this and it changes the shift. So to make something bigger on one end you actually have to move the middle point and then drag it. So it, as I said a tad fiddly but worth it in the end I hope. Okay so we're just a little bit bigger than the the size of the object that we're doing and if we were doing printing we'd call this bleed space. I suppose we can call it bleed space for this. We'll click OK. Now if we move this layer mask up on there, now we've got the rest of the, the cube back and we can see it, that looks good. And I'm just going to, if you um, click on this link tool, if you now change the dimensions of this front piece it won't change the area that's been masked. If you have it linked you'll change both at the same time so just be aware of that because it can be a bit of a problem. Okay double click on this and it will bring us back to a square. Now this is where it gets clever. Um, if we write in our text red side <laughs> um, and we'll just change the, the font 
so it actually fills up the whole of the... This, there we go. Um, move it around, click OK, or in, that, in this case you don't click OK, you click Close, save the changes, it actually goes and resizes that text onto the image just as if it was had been skewed properly on there. Now, this works beautifully, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you can go and grab a brush and paint onto parts of the layer, you can basically do anything you like in terms of design, and as soon as you hit X, close it, save it, it will update it. Um, and because although it gets slightly confusing that you're working in multiple layers and you have to go, where am I actually working? Um, you can go back and because you're working in layers you can do the update, you can get rid of things and change it change it back and it's continually alterable which is really really nice. Now um, the next thing to note is each of those sides of the cube are different brightnesses and that different shading gives um, eye the clue as to um, basically a three-dimensional object. If everything is the same colour, we look at it and go, what's going on there? It, it doesn't look right. Um, or we can't even tell that it's 3D. So, how do you deal with that when you're putting new colours in? Um, one way of doing it is to actually use these these layer masks. And you can create a an adjustment layer. Uh, in this case, we're going to grab a curve tool and we can darken it down. Now that's darkened absolutely everything down which is not particularly helpful because we only want to darken the side that we're working on so hold down shift and transfer it but we've ended up with this problem that we can now see the edge of the mask so there's another way of doing it. This time we're going to grab a create a new group and we're going to drag our, drag our curves layer and our layer 2 into that new group and then we're going to grab this layer mask and mask the whole group. Now when I held down shift, which I should have held down control, it's inverted the, um, the layer mask which is why we've only got the the red edge showing, not the, um, the rest of the image. So what you do is you hold down control and I and that inverts the colors. So. If I did that on, on layer 2 and hold down control and I, nothing happens because it's a smart object. <laughs> um, if I do that on layer copy 1, let's see what happens. There we go. Changes from from black and from white to black and um, shades of grey in between. So, we're starting to get somewhere. Um, but our reds are bright red. Why help? Look at the curves. Look at the layers. The lab layer is above the curves layer, so the curves layer isn't applying to the layer, the um, red layer. We change it over and now we end up with the, um, the problem solved. <coughs> now, why use curves? Because if most of our light sources are not even in colour, if we've got bright yellow sunlight, say, shining on our face, the opposite side of the face is going to be slightly bluer toned. Um, slightly bluer colour temperature and the reason for that is basically that it's the blue sky doing the, the light, the illumination. So what you can do is you can go into the red um, colour spectrum within the curve and you can drop the red down a little bit and you can drop the greens down a little bit and at that point you end up with a slight blue colour cast to the hue. Um, if your darker blues are, or darker shades are bluer, then you can force the, the curve down lower. And it can take a little bit of experimenting to, to get it right, but this is quite a useful way of, of making sure that your shadow colours that you're adding actually match the shadow colours that are in the image. <coughs>